Everyone, glad you are here. Sorry, we were just kibitzing a little bit um, about different things that are happening on the property. You may recognize the photo that you are seeing on your page. That is actually the uh, the Parish Hall Fellowship space. Um, and I took that last year, actually, uh, in preparation for evening prayer, actually, one day. And I thought it was beautiful. So uh, we'll throw that one up there. As the sun sets in the west at St. Peter's, over our beautiful churchyard, so too we are prepared for the Vesper lights to be lit. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Welcome home to St. Peter's. Glad to have you with us. It is an honor to have you for the daily office. We offer the daily office Monday through Thursday for morning and evening prayer, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. It is 5 p.m. and it's time for evening prayer. Give us your intercessions and thanksgivings, and we welcome our chapel cat, Jinx, um, who has joined us. So good to have you all with us, and we are happy to have you in our midst. Include your intercessions and thanksgivings in the comments on the Facebook live chat. If you are watching afterwards on Facebook or on YouTube, don't be afraid to add your intentions. We'll make sure those get prayed over on Monday for morning prayer. For now, evening prayer. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join me for the invitatory. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm 73 this evening. I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Truly, God is good to the upright, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant, I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pain, their bodies are sound and sleep. They are not in trouble as others are, they are not plagued like other people. Therefore, pride is their necklace, violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes swell out with fatness, their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice, loftily they threaten oppression. They, they set their mouths against heaven, and their tongues range over the earth. Therefore, the people turn and praise them, and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Such are the wicked, always at ease, they increase in riches. All in vain I have kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and, and am punished every morning. If I had said I will talk on in this way, I would have been untrue to the circle of your children. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a weary, wearisome task. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, 
Then I perceived their end. Truly, you set them in slippery places. You make them fall to ruin. How they are destroyed in a moment, swept away utterly by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakens. On awaking, you despise their phantoms. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart. I was stupid and ignorant. I was like a brute beast toward you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me with honor. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart fail, may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Indeed, those who are far from you will perish. You put an end to those who are false to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge to tell of all your works. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body see that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, the Song of Judith. Together, I will sing a new song to my God, for you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength, invincible. Let the whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came into being. You sent your breath and it formed them. No one is able to resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. Rocks melt like wax at your presence. But to those who fear you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, can please you. But whoever fears the Lord shall stand in your sight forever. A reading from John. Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the creator who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by God. 
everyone who has heard and learned from the creator comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the creator except the one who is from God. He has seen the creator. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is Song of Christ's Humanity. Together. Though in the form of God, Christ Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat thee, O Lord that thy holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat thee, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat thee, O Lord, that there may be peace to thy church and to the whole world. We entreat thee, O Lord, that we may depart this life in thy faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat thee, O Lord, that we may be bound together by thy Holy Spirit in the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, our patron, and all thy saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat thee, O Lord. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know thee as thou art revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of thy love. Amen. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship thee, all nations obey thee, all tongues confess and bless thee, and men and women everywhere love thee and serve thee in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Remember and pray for the Diocese of Maryland as they prepare for the election of their next bishop. And we pray for Randy, dear friend of this parish, who is a candidate in that election. And for all the candidates, may the Holy Spirit guide and govern the process. We pray for the Diocese of Florida as they continue to seek direction and discernment in the election of their next bishop. And for the wisdom and grace of the Episcopal Church's governing bodies 
to do their best to guide that process in justice and in peace. We pray for all those who are struggling tonight. And we also pray with great thanksgiving for the grace and glory of the resumption of our choir. The practice begins tonight at seven. Look forward to hearing them sing God's praise. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And we Good ended morning. at the page. What's that? Yeah, we did end at the bottom of the page. Yay. <laughs> oh, see, Laura, the day ended well for you. There you go. All Are right. We, folks. Week? <laughs> we give you, we give great thanks to God for having you with us. Amy, Betty, and all the rest that joined us live. We are so thankful for your presence. Please do like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, follow us on Facebook, do all the social things, share us with your friends. We appreciate the support and know that it is always a blessing and an honor to welcome you home to St. Peter's, particularly in this season of a Holy Lent. We look forward to seeing you on Monday for morning prayer at 9 a.m., but also remember that we are on, on a regular routine of worship on Sundays. The fifth Sunday of Lent is coming up. It is Lazarakia, Lazarus Sunday. We'll be cooking Lazarakia buns uh, with the kids in the Sunday school between the services. And we, we love that. It's a tradition that we had pre-COVID and we're restoring it. So it's a good thing. We will see you later. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.